these days. They help out in every way possible. Thank you, Deacon. This is a very, very important week because this week, once again, as of last week, we talk about the Eucharist. And the question is, what is Father going to say today? I guess what I'm going to say today is this. How many saw things that happened at the Olympics this week? Raise your hand if you watched the Olympics this week. Almost all of you. Otherwise, you're not telling the truth. You all watched it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And why did I ask that question? Because I watched it periodically this week, too. And as I watched the Olympics, I had just finished reading that first, first lesson today. And I said, listen to that first lesson. And I thought to myself, there's a word that is used when you are a runner. As the word is when you hit the wall. And I sat there and watched these athletes, these young men and women, and I thought to myself, I wonder how many times they hit the wall daily in their lives. Now, I say that about the Olympics. But I'm also talking for a moment about the first reading, which I'll just touch on. What has happened is that the prophet has hit the wall. And the question is, why did he just hit the wall? Well, I want you, when you go home today, to turn to that first reading again and go back on the lesson in Romans. It's a story of, of, the, of the, the, the prophet confronting Ahaz, who marries Jezebel. And Jezebel brings to, the, to, the, to, the, to Israel a, god, a priest of the god Baal. And they set up places of worship throughout the country. And one day, a very deserted time when it was very hot, the land was parched, people were starving to death, and there was no water, the prophet said to Baal, the priest of Baal, call your God and ask your God to send water upon the earth because your God is the fertility God and water is the main thing. And they said, we'll bet you on this. And so they began to dance and pray, do all the things that they do to call their God. And God did not come. He said, well, try again. Try a little louder. Try a little again. Maybe, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's out on a date or something. He's up there somewhere. And so they tried harder and harder and harder. Still, no bail, sending anything. And the prophet said, give me some water. He took water and filled three little streams full of water and prayed to God. And the minute he prayed to God, all of a sudden, lightning and thunder came from the sky and drenched the whole area. And he said to the priest, what's wrong with Baal? And that made them mad. Also, Jezebel didn't like it either because they began to ridicule her. She was the one to bring the, the priest there. So he went out running for his life to go to the, uh, to this, to the mountain of Aurora, the mountain of God. And we find the lesson today here when he stopped. He's hit the wall. He's laying there under a broom tree. And while he's sleeping, an angel comes to him, bringing him bread and water. And the angel said to him, take and eat and drink, or you will not make the trip successful. He ate and drank and fell asleep again. The angel came back and said, here's more water, here's more bread. Eat and drink, or you will not make your destination. And he ate and drank, got up, and made it to Or, the mountain of God. I want you to go home today and read that first lesson, how that lesson was formed, and how you can see how he hit the wall because he was tired, and God sent him an angel. You know, 
today, as we sit here, I can ask each one of you, when was the last time you hit the wall? And some of you are going to say, I've never hit the wall. And then I would say, to be truthful with yourself, when was the last time you hit the law, the wall, with your family? When was the last time you hit the law, wall with your boss? When was the last time that you had, to, you had hit the law, wall, wall with your, your in-laws? When was the last time you hit the wall with your children? When was the last time you hit the wall with the church? When was the last time you hit the law with the government? And you begin to see how many times you and I hit the wall. And what do we do to regain our strength? Most of us go do something like turn on the TV I begin to watch our, our screens and our, 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 our phones, or we go down and buy something at the store. You notice that when we hit the wall, we always seem to buy a lot. We all go down and buy a new car, go buy a new sofa. We buy things because it's a way of kind of trying to regenerate ourselves in our life. We do all kinds of things in life to regain the strength that you and I need when we hit the wall. And because we do it so often, we do it many, many times. Even now we hear about the drug problem. They do it because they hit the wall. We hear about the alcohol problem. They do it because they hit the wall. Somebody, people turn that way in their life to do all the things that are just deadly to their own personal lives. But the next question I say is this. What do you do when you hit the wall with the church? Most of you stay home for a while. Most of you don't come to church. Most of you begin to talk about the church. And when you're unhappy in the church, you can always hear it when you go out the door, I didn't like that sermon. I didn't like the choir. I didn't like the way they read this. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. You begin to find wrong in the church. You begin to find all the things of conflict in the church. And you almost kind of say, how did I get here? But that's what happens to us. We, we've hit the wall, and we do not know how to get away from hitting that wall when we come to God. And the beautiful part about this being, the weeks that we talk about the Eucharist, is profound. You all come here today, not necessarily to hear Father Bill talk. You've come to church for something else. You come here to be nourished, to be nourished with something that only we can receive here. First of all, there's the community, the body of Christ. There's no other group like the body of Christ because the body of Christ is there. We're here all together with the same hope and the same joy that we will be nourished by love for each other and care for each other. We will give here people who understand who we are and like each other. The sense of community is here. That's one reason why we come here but there's something even far greater than that. To hear the word, the word is beautiful because the Lord leads me to something else. The, the word leads me to, to see that the real purpose of me being here is because God has called me here. And as I said two weeks ago, because he loves you. He knows when you hit the wall. He knows when you need to be nourished. He knows when you're at a point in your life that the only place that you can turn is to him. And it gives us something which you can only receive here. And that is the gift of his son. I always say to people, do you realize what happens here? 
We long for the kingdom, which is not so far away. We long for Christ's presence in our life, which is not far away. And the Lord who walked among us, who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who healed the blind, who proclaimed good news, showed love and care for the mankind, is with us here right now. And while we are here, he will give us the gift that we long for as much as we can ever have, the gift of his body and his blood. My brothers and sisters, it is said, and I heard this announced the other day, that almost 70% of Catholics no longer believe in real presence. Many people here say, I don't know if I believe in real presence or not. But my response to you is this, why not? Why do you not believe that the Lord is giving you his body and his blood? You know, I was not raised Catholic. I was 30 years old when I became Catholic. We didn't believe, we had, we had communion, but we believed it was just bread and wine. And after we finished, uh, we took the wine and poured it back into the bottle. We took the bread and put it back into the bin, and that was it. But there was something about becoming Catholic which made me so very aware of what you have received. That God has given you and me that which sustains us in our life, and that is his body and his blood. See, in a few moments from now, we will pray to God with the Lord, asking God to give us the gift to the world through his Son. And God will give us that gift that will nourish us in our life. Take him as the energy we need in our life to live the life that we're called to live, that life of goodness, that live life of kindness, that life of joy, that life of being able to overcome sorrow, that life we need in our life that strengthens us and makes us who we are. For we are the body of Christ, and he will once again nourish us and feed us with his son's body and blood. And we will go out into the world to show the world that Christ really loves them and cares for us. I really don't know how, if you don't think that you're receiving the body and the blood here, how you can go out into the world and give all that energy away because all you're doing at that point is only giving your love and your energy when it's really God giving the love and God passing through you to give the love to the world. See, that's one of the problems with, with the world. Sometimes we think that we can give the love, our love, to the world. My brothers and sisters, I'm just a human being. God is God. God's love is different than my love. And God loves me. And wants me to take the love that he gives me to give it to the world. You come here today... And God is going to give you the most precious gift that you can receive. And the Lord is going to say, go into the world now and show the world that love. May you today open your hearts to once again receive the body and the blood of our Lord who loves us deeply.